Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening and welcome to Sin Plus. It's so nice to see so many of you here today. Um, and I've just been looking down the chat. Um, I've seen people from the US, from Spain, Germany, all the way from Harrogate. Um, and I'm sure lots of other people as well. Great. Welcome to everybody. Um, Bruckner's Locus Iste is one of the most beautiful reflective pieces in the in the, in the canon of, of choral music. Um, and today we're going to be delving beneath the surface, um, getting under its skin um, and looking at it from a singer's perspective. So looking at it from the perspective of approaching the piece to sing both with really good stylistic knowledge and and also with good vocal technique um, and healthily and happily, which is what we want um, from everybody here. Um, so have another look down the chat. Hi, hello, hello. Julie, Susan, Liz, Anya, Anne, April. Oh, I'm going in alphabetical order again. Assumpta, Barbara, Birgit, Brian, Kabutler, Charmy, Sherry, Chrissy, Christine, Kovadonga, David, Debbie. Oh, I'm going to go and do some at the end. Robert, Ted, Suzanne, Susan, Sue, Stefan, Sally, Rosalind, Petra, Penny, Patricia and Pat, and a few from the middle just for good measure, Catherine, Kim, Lever, Liz and Liz, and also Liz, three Liz's, um, and a Leslie and a Margaret, two Margaret's and a Marion. There we go. Hello to everybody, whether I've said your name or not. And also hello to YouTube, um, where we are streaming today. Uh, we're doing an open session, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you've done your hair um, because we're going to be sending this live to YouTube and it's also going to be available afterwards for people to watch so people can get a little sense of what we do here in Sing Plus. So um, just to summarize, if this is the first session you've joined, this is only the second session we've run. Um, to summarize what we're trying to do here, um, we're trying to provide um, a way for you to have a sort of conversation about vocal technique and about repertoire. So if you don't have private singing lessons, which is, any, I would say the vast majority of the singing population of the world don't have private singing lessons, where do you get this kind of knowledge from? Where do you learn? How do you develop? Um, and without sort of taking that massive leap to traveling and finding a singing teacher, what's the kind of middle ground? Well, that is what we're hoping to do here. It's not each time we're looking at a piece of repertoire, but it's not specifically to learn that repertoire in its entirety and just note bash it. It's time to uh, use that repertoire as a departure point for learning about the type of music, about the era, about how to sing it well, what you should be looking out for, just a sort of friendly, um, I suppose, Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder. Um, but it's it's uh, me or Jamie or one of our various experts who we've got lined up in the wings um, coming to give you that little bit of insight. Um, and we're not going to be picking all the repertoire. Some of the repertoire is going to be picked by you. So when you get into your choirs in September, if you see something that you're like, I love this piece, but actually I'm having real trouble with bar 56. There's a request form at the bottom of your Sing Plus course where you can say, please, can we look at this piece of repertoire? and even flag up specific bars as we go on, kind of finding the shape of, of this community as we go. Um, but as we continue, we're going to get a sense of how much we can do, how much we can cover, and what kind of requests we can take in from people so that you're getting some really in-depth and personalised um, input into your singing as we go. So the two things we want you to achieve are, we want you to feel like you're supported in your singing wherever you sing, anywhere, even if it's just in the shower. Um, and we want you to feel like you're progressing. And if we've done those two things, then we are happy. Right. OK, so today we're going to look at Bruckner's Locus Estate. Now, Bruckner was um, uh, composing around the same time as Mahler, as um, Dvorak, Wagner, Verdi, Brahms. He's one of those behemoths of the classical canon. He was born in 1824, died in 1896. So he sits really firmly, he's got both feet in the 19th century. Um, so in many ways, he's sort of, um, uh, I was gonna say a classic of the times, but I don't wanna mix my terminology. He was um, indicative of the time that he was living. 
Um, and Locus Estate is one of over 30 small scale choral pieces that he wrote. He was famous for writing nine symphonies uh, and several big classical choral works, masses and the like. But he also wrote little pieces. And this is one of them. I'd say it's a, it's a little gem. Um, it's a motet. Now, I've heard the word motet slung around a lot. And nobody ever stopped me to explain to me what a motet actually is classified as. A motet is a polyphonic composition. It's usually sacred and it's usually got a Latin text. So it will tend to be used in Christian church services to go in between bits of the liturgy and it will normally take a um it will normally have a sacred meaning normally have a latin text but it doesn't always but it'll fit in between the liturgy and it will deal with another type of bible story passage from the bible um so there's your motet basically it's a short choral piece can be accompanied might not be so locus iste um, I mean, I'm doing a lot of yakking. I'd like to have a little look round first and see who sung this, because um, it's something that appears quite often. Um, it appears quite often if you sing in a church choir. I'm just looking round. C Butler, yes, Tina, give me a wave, Janet, um, Helen, Melody, Rosalind, Jenny, Andrea, of course, Christine, of course. There we go, Patricia, Hugh, Jesse, Liz. Oh, keep waving. I'd like to say hello to everybody. Elaine and Assumpta, Vika, Liz, Debbie and Patricia. Oh, hello. Um, and apologies if I've missed anybody off there. It's not an unusual piece. It's something you're going to come across quite often. Give me a wave if you haven't sung it. I won't call everybody's name out, but those people discovering it for the first time. Excellent. Well, I'm glad we played it at the beginning then. It gives you a chance to, to get to know it. And we will listen to it again in just a bit. Locker sustain. It's about place. You'll probably know this because a recent project we did in the stay at home choir also set the same text. So you could call Gareth's locker sustain a motet. It could be performed as part of a church service. That is completely valid. Um, I'm not sure Gareth uh, gets out of bed in the morning thinking of himself as a liturgical composer, but who knows? I might be wrong. Um, so it's um, so it means it's a piece about place. And the text literally translates to this place was made by God. Locus iste, this location. Adeo by God, factus est, was made. Um, and then we move on to um, irep, um, uh, blah, 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 a priceless mystery. Um, and then it is without reproof, which is the bit that goes irreprehensibilis est. The British word that corresponds to that is reprehensible. It is not re reprehensible. It is without reproof. OK, that's what we're singing about. And it's funny, you know, all of us meeting together from all different places um, to think that we're singing um, a piece that was written when singing from different places wouldn't even have crossed anybody's mind. It wouldn't even be a blink in the milkman's eye. Um, and yet this piece brings us all together. So I'm going to put the score on the screen um, and we're going to have another listen through. The recording I'm playing is gorgeous recording from a disc by The Sixteen, um, conducted, I presume, by Harry Christophers, but I will let you know. Um, right, let me just turn my notifications off because we're getting unnecessary bings, ladies and gentlemen, and nobody wants an unnecessary bing. Okay. So I'm looking at Marion and Pamela and Nancy to tell me if you can see this. <gasps> Magic. Yep, all good. And here we go.
Okay, so over to you guys. I'm gonna hit that magic mute button the other way. Would you put in the chat things that you've experienced when you've sung this music? How does it feel to sing it? Any bits that you always found really difficult? Like, let's have a chat about this. I'm looking in the chat now. If you wanna unmute and contribute something, please do. I should find that you're able to. That gorgeous alto suspension always makes me well up. It's just absolutely beautiful isn't it it's this kind of music you would describe as very romantic music not sort of a <laughs> kind of romantic music but romantic period Mahler, Verdi, you know Bruckner, Brahms romantic composers um in case anybody ever throws that at you breath control was always difficult difficult not to be OTT yes and there are many unclassy performances of this piece <laughs> Yes, controlling dynamics. Yeah, it's got a really nice alto part. I love it. Everyone's being very polite and just putting it in the chat, but that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sung it at school. The basses are very relaxed. <laughs> yeah, you don't have too much to do, do you, basses? Um, and it's difficult to control the top notes. Yes. Did anybody feel when they sang this piece, they had an issue with, with tuning? So when you've got... Oh, I've, my piano switched itself off. There we go. Oh gosh, that's a, a slightly uh, higher pitch than the the recording was. And um, interesting because you start with and then you go into another major major chord, but a whole tone higher. And I find that that is notorious. It's really, really difficult not to go flat when you're getting to that stage. So we're gonna have a look at this first bit. Here we go. Hopefully everybody can see this nice and clearly. We have soprano, alto, tenor, bass. Okay. And then you've got lovely singing all the way through. You go right there and the altos have to stay up. Let's have a little go at singing that through together. Here we are. I'm going to sing the alto part because it's going to help keep everybody else grounded. Here we go. And three. And. Oh, 
for open fifths. So for example, when you've got your... I'm gonna take the F sharp out of it for the moment. So I'm gonna take the alto note out and I end up with something which sounds very bare. It could be like some kind of medieval music or something. It's very bare. It becomes beautiful and, and, and sort of accepted Western harmony when we add the major third. Ah, lovely. Altos, that's your job. You make that entire chord major. You make it major when it goes into C. There you are. And then, beautiful. All right. So if you're on the fifths, you need to know and be listening to make that nice open fifth with the bass part okay i'd like to have the um oh yes i do thank you so much original sound thank you there we go you need to be listening and making your perfect fifths this sort of outline of the harmony and if you're an alto you need to be really listening i'm not going to get into the um nitty gritty of temperaments and tuning and all of that stuff for now that's for later and maybe we might make that an elective session so only the real geeks need to <laughs> need to delve into that i can see janet is uh, is uh, fiddling with his glasses um but yes we've got a lovely open fifth here and then the altos you're on the money note here we go. Ah, uh, so soprano, alto, tenor, bass. I actually had a bottom C earlier on today, so there you go. Here we go. I'm going to sing alto again. Two, three. Right, now I'm going to pick up on something that Susan has said in the chat. Good breathing and legato singing required. So, can everybody give their jaws a little bit of a wiggle? That's it. Chew a toffee. Horrible, make some horrible noises. I'm gonna turn back to, uh, hello. Um, keep chewing. Make your mouth as wide as it can go. I bet you're glad I put myself on full screen for this. Small, big, small. And then say, Locusi stay. Here we go, speaking it. Locusi stay. Good. I'm going to introduce you. If you haven't done tons of stay at home choir before, I'm going to introduce you to what I call either teddy bear voice or drag queen, depending on the audience. Okay? And it sounds like this. Locusi stay. So you're doing a swoopy, almost sing-songy voice. It gets you a little bit closer to the technique that you use for singing without having to worry about notes, okay? It gets you engaging the breath, um, and that is super, super useful. And it also makes it easier to practice consonants accurately. If you're just going, la, si, stay, it can feel like your consonants are having to work way harder than your voice because you're in a speaking voice. So we need to up the ante with the vowels as well. So here we go, speaking it for me, but in this sing-songy voice and la, si, stay. Yes, lads, you can get out your falsetto. That is totally fine. Okay, now we've got to match these vowels. A, de, o, fa, ctus, est. Okay. Vowels move. 
in your mouth. Can everybody say e and e? Nice. Now say ooh, ooh, e ooh, e ooh. Can you feel the e sits more far forward than ooh does? Yep. Placement. Okay. There is a sort of spectrum. Think of it like a like a, a sort of color palette. One of those charts you get from Dulux. Um, there's a spectrum from light to dark. Mm, actually, no, I shouldn't say light to dark. Forwards placed to backwards placed. And it goes like this. E, E, A, O, U. E, E, A, O, U. Okay? Try them just separately with me. And E, E, A, O, U. Okay? E, E, A, O, U. Now, imagine you've got an old telephone. Do you remember those old dialy telephones? Yep, stuck to the side of your head. Because, you know, it's all happened to us once, you know, so we might as well just recall that memory. Um, and you're gonna dial each of those vowels. E, E, A, O, U. With me, please? This is an exercise Sorry, I've just realized I set you off and then I stopped. This is an exercise in developing awareness of your voice and how your instrument works. Because if, if you know where those vowels sit, then you can use that knowledge to maximize your resonance, but also to match vowels together in terms of your placement so that you get beautiful legato singing. This is me coming straight back to what Susan said in the chat about having a really lovely legato through this. Matching your vowel sounds and creating a consistent flow of vowel is so important. I would say it's one of the most important techniques when you're tackling this piece and lots of other Latin motets. There's great prize placed in singing this kind of music on consistency and legato, okay? It's different when you're singing a different genre like pop music. But here, we love a consistent vowel. Okay, so with me now, let's dial these vowels. Here we go, starting with E. And E, E, A, O, U. Great, I'm just gonna pause the chat for a moment because I know that some people aren't able to disable it, so give me a sec. You can still chat with me as the host. Backwards, Y. It's like O, Y. Here we go, and Good. E A O I. All the way backwards and forwards. And E A O U O I. E A O I. There you go. Right. So we've got A D O F A. Can you see how my placement is flipping forwards and backwards? It's literally like, I don't know, reversing the polarity in the negative indicator. Adeo. Oh no, it's the other way around. Adeo factus est. Okay, I want you to make those vowels as different as possible. Okay, this is negative practice. Make those vowels as different as possible. Here we go. In fact, I'll put it up on the screen so that you can see the text. There it is, right in the middle. Here we go. As different as possible. Ready and one. Adeo factus est. Horrible. Horrible, everybody. <laughs> now we're going to try and make them nice and smooth. Adeo factus est but still be aware you know you can't change the fact that it's a backwards placed vowel but you can embrace it and love it for what it is because all vowels are welcome here all right here we go ready and adeo factus est I'm waving my hands around all over the shop. I'm doing a real Harry Potter here. Can you do it with me? Because this is gonna increase your muscle memory. This is gonna tell you, you don't have to do my limp wrists. You can do it however you like, but show yourself, remind your brain where the forwards ones are and where the backwards ones are. 
Ah starts right in the middle. Ready and Adeo Factus Est. A U E. Okay, you're going all the way from one end of the spectrum to the other. Okay, let's take the alto line here. Um, the second time you sing Adeo Factus Est, everybody, all the altos sing it on a D on a G. Easy. So we're all just going to intone on this G or down the octave if you are so inclined. Here we go. Ready and. Good. Negative practice. Do it with all the different vowels. Forwards and backwards and really not very legato. Ready and. Okay, but by matching those vowels together, you're helping to create that legato. Add to that a smooth, connected airflow, and you'll be cooking on gas. Let's try it with the soprano part. Ready, and... Goodness me, my voice wasn't ready for that. Apologies. Let's try it with the bass part. We got... Yeah. So just careful with your counting there. It's a different rhythm than for everybody else. One, two, three. And then you go on because the basses have got that lovely, lovely continuation all the way through. Yes, Foxley's decided to grace us with his backside. Go on then, off you go. He might do that thing when he... Oh no, he's up. That's good. Right. Excellent. Um, yes. Basses, your legato is more important in this piece, dare I say it, than every other part's legato. Because you're going through all of those, all of those bits there. Okay. Ade, ade. Don't let the D get in the way of a lovely connected vowel. Okay. So, let's move on. Give me another little wave if you found when you've sung this with your choir, it's gone flat. Gonna go back to gallery view. Gone flat, yeah, gone flat. This piece is up absolute okay, for going flat. Um, and why do we think that is? Again, feel free to unmute and have a chat or you can put it in the chat. You can be as shy or as confident as you like. Well, it keeps going on the same note. Yeah. And when that happens, you just go, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, you're absolutely right. We um, always try to re replace that every, every repeated note, reposition it when you sing it. Totally. It's hard, isn't it, when you're singing repeated notes because they get boring. You get like a goldfish in a bowl looking at the same castle again and again and again. Um, repeated notes, the, the, you'll have heard your, chorals, uh, your, um, your choral director say, just sing each one a little bit higher. That is psychological. If you did that, you would end up singing a higher note. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But a lot of it is going to be in your airflow. So for the altos, keeping your vowels similar is also going to help you keep your tuning in place. Okay. And add to that your nice, consistent airflow. If we go, can you hear that the overtones of my singing are sharp or flat depending on the vowel? Keeping those vowels consistent, doing the yaoi, keeping an eye on those vowels is going to be a very, very important part of helping to keep this in tune. I'm changing to. Oh. Go on, no, 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 carry on. Yeah. Changing to the, when you're a soprano and you're on that top note and yeah. you're changing the, um, the, to the F and it's a really difficult one that. So the deo to factus, it's right in your, your the part of your voice where it's so really yeah. hard to, yeah. And you've got to stop for a great big hefty consonant as well. Factus <laughs> yeah can stop you right in your flow if you don't have a proper breath flow going. You're absolutely right. In fact, you're leading me on to what I am about to start talking about. Um, 
Well, I'm just going to check the chat just to make sure everybody's happy. Oh, interesting question. What does the C mean after the treble clef? Let me just show you where um, Pat was talking about. This means common time. This is a different way of writing 4-4. Four, four. So if in doubt, count the beats in the bar. But yes, this is just it's something you wouldn't necessarily come across unless you've sung in lots of choirs. This C simply means common time. Great. Okay, so what I was going to get on to is exactly what, I can't remember who it was, said. It was singing repeated notes. And to add to that, the other thing that makes this so devilish is there are lots of semitones and lots of whole tones. Yeah, I can see lots of wise nods from people. So I'm going to, I'm just make sure I'm spotlighted again, spotlit. Here it is. I, I apologize for the slightly janky chopping up of this phrase. Um, it was halfway through a bar, so you've got no key signature here. Rest assured, this is a tenor clef. So we've got, we're starting on a C. Let's sing this together. You're going down in semitones. Here we go. Two, three. Actually, um, sing it in your upper octave if you'd like to as well. Two, three. Don't judge me for going up the octave. <laughs> um, yes, so this is where it can really slide. Okay, would you copy me? I'm going to sing a load of semitones. I'm going to put them all over the shop and I just want you to copy me. Semitone. 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 Great. It sounds like we've come from the Romantic era into some kind of weird contemporary, um, I don't know, aleatoric music performance. Um, I'm not sure I entirely uh, approve of it. Um, here's a fun game. If you hear something that is a semitone, sing it back. If you hear something that is not a semitone, click twice into the screen. Here we go. This one's a first one to practice. Nobody's getting out on this round, okay? Nice. Well done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so far, so good. Okay, so when you've got loads of semitones together, suddenly having a whole tone can be, can put you off the scent, okay? And especially, I did all of those in the same direction, but I could have had them going in opposite directions to, uh, to distract you even more. Here, we need to get used to, what we were doing there, I'm gonna come in again. What we were doing there was we were developing a muscle memory for a semitone in lots of different areas of our voice. Sing me a semitone up here. Sing me a semitone down here. They feel different in different areas of our voice. Okay, some of them they feel further away, closer together, depending on where you are. But by doing an exercise like that, we're developing a sense of muscle memory for how big a semitone actually is. Semitone, 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 semitone. Okay. 
Um, here's another here's another quiz. We're going to try and sing all of the semitones in an octave. This is again, this is a muscle memory generating exercise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Here we go. We're going to do it together and then we're going to do it unaccompanied and I'm going to play the octave at the end we'll see who got there. Here we go. Twelve and semitone, 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 semitone. Oh, not too bad. That was me testing myself. <laughs> okay. On your own without me. Here we go. Twelve and semitone oh I sh I'm so sorry I should have said you can also say half step if you're a, a, one of our American brethren I must remember to translate here we go semitone or half step and <laughs> nice. I can see some people absolutely loving it and some people going, oh my god, I stopped at one, like five or six. It's an interesting game to play with you, flat on the seventh. Happens all the time because sevenths are one of the most movable intervals within Western tonality. They, they, they are like six and sevenths, they move around a lot depending on where you are in the harmony. But that's a conversation for the pub. Okay, so... Now we've got a little bit of practice here. This is a whistle stop tour. You can always come back in Sing Plus and revise these exercises in order to get better at singing semitones. Um, incidentally, if you are watching the YouTube live stream, you can go to the website and you can explore different ways that you can get involved with Sing Plus. Um, and every single session that we run live is also transformed into uh, content that will be up forevermore and um, so you can always come back and reference um, these sort of tips and tricks as you go through your singing life. So we've just done a couple of uh, quick exercises to improve our awareness of singing semitones okay now we're going to come back to this tenor line which is at the bottom of the screen and even if you are a soprano ah brilliant well done Pat even if you're a soprano I would like you to have a go at singing this you can start here we go, um, oh, yes, Petra, there is, but I will get to it another day. And uh, we go in irreprehensibly zest. Um, and yeah, we're going to sing it to do, 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 because we're going to take the Latin text out of the equation. Always when you're practicing, practice something specific. And if the text is not what you're practicing, you can get rid of it. You don't need to focus on it. It doesn't need to draw the energy of your brain. So we're going to take the text out of it. Here we go. Do, two, three. Do, 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 do. There's your semitone. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Okay, if you are a tenor or you're singing a tenor in this piece, you will do all of your colleagues a favor by making sure that that is tight. Because if the tenors go sliding flat, this is what the altos and the sopranos have above them. around so much let me just change the page
okay? It's so crunchy. It's so crunchy that the upper voices do not stand a chance if the tenors are flat. Okay, let's have a go now. We're gonna sing it. I'm gonna sing the, I'm gonna sing the, ooh, what am I gonna sing? I'm just gonna play the tenor line. So, have a think about how you come in. You've got a C there, we've got an E and an F sharp. Um, sopranos, you can get your F sharp from um, which you've just sung. Um, oh, you're welcome. Um, yes, you can get your, your note from there, or you can think about where you're heading. It's not quite so intuitive. Here we go, here we go, two tenors. Uh, now I need to change the page. <laughs> I am multitasking. Again, I'm not going to go especially over the uh, these upper parts, but just so you know, this is why this bit tends to go so flat. It's very clashy. It's beautiful. Should we have a go at singing it? Shall I sing the soprano part, um, and the altos can have a go at harmonising with me on the um, on the alto part, and then I'm going to swap. Here we go. There's the soprano part and there's the alto part and we're going to start straight on bar measure 22, I think it is, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, yes, 22. So, tenors, you're already down here. Here we go. Two, three, four. I'm going to swap to the alto part, but here's a reminder. We discussed at the beginning matching vowels, keeping the airflow going consistently. You can't stop doing those things because we've introduced harmonic complexity into the mix. Here we go. 22 directly, please. F sharp, E, B natural. I'm singing the alto part. And. I'm taking care when I get to that C major. I'm listening for the bare bones of the harmony around me. And I'm slotting in the third. Altos, can you just have a go at that? I'm going to play the open fifth and just sing La. La. Try singing the minor version. So you're going to sing an E flat instead. Here we go. And. Here we go again. Major version. No. And this is something that is useful right at the beginning. Let's try it in a different key, because you do get it. Two keys together. Can you sing me the open major third, please? No. So here we go. Here's the C major. Here's the major third. 
and then here's the major third. Okay, now that may or may not feel very comfortable to you. If it doesn't, start trying to turn your attention to the sound either side of you, because you're gonna to start to build up a picture of where you sit within chords. You can't do it all at once. There's gonna be, this is practice. This grows your practice bit by bit. This is not the last time you're gonna hear any of these techniques, any of this advice. It's like yoga. We know the poses. We know what we need to do but it's about growing and developing the practice. And one day you find that something clicks and then another day something else clicks and something else clicks and you go over the ground and you deepen your practice, you increase your awareness and before you know it, you're making real progress. Okie dokie. So I would love to hear I'm just gonna like go through, I'm gonna flick through the music again quickly so you can have a little perusal of it. I'd love to hear about any bits that you found difficult when you're singing this. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly show you the music again so you can have a little swizz of it. Particular bits in your part, I'm thinking specifically bar numbers here, that you found really tricky. And I'm also gonna check the chat. Bar 40, I'll have a little look. <laughs> Jane, I hope you don't mind me sharing this with the group. She says, with yoga, it's my back that clicks. Okay, I'm getting a lot of requests for bass jumps, which is something I will absolutely cover. That's all easy. It's, a, it's roughly in three parts, this piece. A, B, A. So this middle section... is a tricky bit and before you know it you're back to back to the safe great oh we've got a lot to go on then right okay bar 40 where are we bar 40 where are you hiding oh yes 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 um i'm i'm presuming i can just see i can just see jan is it the bass part yeah. Okay. This is going to be great fun for sopranos and altos who will never have sung this before. It goes. De okay. Now, my advice to you here would be to think harmonically. So, this, um, trying to pitch an augmented fourth, because that's the interval between the G and the C sharp. It's known as the devil's interval because it is the most unharmonic, disharmonic, oh I don't, I've forgotten the word, interval in the whole of music. De hard, really hard. If you think harmonically and look at where we head at bar 41. Bar 41, the first chord, Sorry, uh, why, um, it's kind of, um, we've got a suspension in the alto part, but we actually end up on a chord of D minor. Can you hear that? I've got my open chord here. Oh no, I've got a third in the top. Whoops. There we are. And there's the minor third, and it's also in the soprano part. So altos um, are putting us off by singing a B flat, but here it is. Can you hear that, that nice minor chord? So my advice to you, Jan, would be think about the C sharp as leading into that. So yeah, we've got Sing that with me, everybody, please. And De again, and De suddenly it sounds like a theme tune. De so rather than just trying to pitch intervals, we're being more intelligent. We're looking at where the music is heading or listening if that does, if you know, if 
reading sheet music isn't your thing, you're listening to a recording and thinking, oh, that's just a major chord. And then we go, and then we end up in another minor chord here. We've got, uh, sorry. We end up in our, that's it, our E minor there. Okay, so I would be thinking into D minor there. Right, I'm going to crack on. Bar six, another bass jump. Goodness me, basses. Stefan said that you were really relaxed. What's all of this suddenly? One, two, three, four, five, bar six. Yes. Oh, this is it's gorgeous, this bit, but it is tricky for the basses because they're not allowed to breathe. Bar six into bar seven. There, they, we've just had our nice D major chord. Okay, so firstly, I'd like you to put your hands on your hips and I'd like everybody in their own octave because it's high in whatever octave you sing um, apart from the alto octave. Um, we're going to slide right the way up. Ah, here we go. Ah, and again, breathe. Ah, nice, let's do another one a little bit higher just to make sure we've overshot the measure. And ah, let's do another one just for fun. Here we go. Shall we do one more? Yes, here we go. So if you were a bass then, you just hit a nice top B, which was probably very exciting for you. Um, congratulations if that was you. So now we go back to that bottom G. Da, da. Start by just being very free with your voice. And even try and overshoot it slightly. Try this sopranos in your own octave because this is, you get the same thing actually. Overshoot it slightly and come back to it. Here we go, basses. Iste, please. And. Iste. Okay. Other advice is do it the other way around. Sing that for me, please. Sopranos in the top octave. And. Hot cross buns. Um, that means you, if you start with the higher note, you prepare your breath for the higher note. And even though we know it's coming, I will say this a million times, your brains are clever. Your brains know there's a big leap coming or a high note coming in the soprano's case, but your body is stupid. Your body only prepares for the note that you're about to sing unless you've developed your practice, unless you've grown your practice and your, your dumb body has finally got with the program and knows to prepare in advance. So a good way to practice that is to start with the high note so that your body doesn't have a choice. Your body is prepared for the amount of energy it needs for that high note. So if in doubt, swap them round. Moving on, moving on up, nine to ten soprano. Where is that bar? I cannot find it. Yes, here it is. Um, uh, yes, can be very difficult. Yes, so you've just gone, I do And you've come down to an E and then, oh no, you've got to go up again. Okay, 
okay? So, my advice here is in Stay At Home Choir, we always talk about released breaths, okay? A released breath is, put it in the chat or just show me a finger, high or low. Release breath, high or low in your body. Low. I've got a load of thumbs down. How sad is that? It makes me feel sad, but it is the correct answer. Yes, a released breath, I will just stand up so you can see, is low in your body, okay? You've got your thumb in your belly button, your fingers nice and loosely below, all of the flab is hanging out, hanging around, wobbling around, because that, ladies and gentlemen, is healthy and good singing technique. And also just healthy generally. Nice to be, uh, um, nothing, nothing wrong with a little bit of flabby belly action when it comes to good breathing. Um, so my advice here is, you've got high notes, but the breath has to stay low, okay? So if we practice a low breath, let's just do this together. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna have to flip pages in between, but we're gonna sing the last two bars of this page and then the first two bars of that page, okay? In the soprano part. So we've got just that. If you're not a music reader, I'm just gonna sing that one more time so that you can have a little listen to it and hopefully memorize it. It's only nine notes. It goes. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna sing it to Lou because we're not practicing text, so let's take the text out of it. Here we go, ready and. Okay, in between, in those two breaks, in those two beats of rest, you need a low breath. Low breath. And it should feel that you ping back up to the high notes from down here. So I think about it like this. I'm just gonna show it to you. Here we go. And I feel like I engage, but I'm not going. I'm breathing high because that is where my throat will tie up, and that second F coming back there is not gonna come out. So we need a pingy breath, we need to properly release, and then we need to whoop, ping it back up into the stratosphere again. Okay, um, I'm go we're at seven o'clock, oh my goodness, bar nine piano volume. Oh yes, oh, as in like dynamic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, dynamic piano, I always say to my choirs, never, never let your dynamic compromise your tone because we end up with a nasty sound. I'd rather the sopranos were singing with great character and sort of intimacy, but actually mezzo forte in terms of volume, and then the rest of the choir was basically piano. It'll sound piano overall, but the most important thing is that the sopranos are continuing to make a nice sound. Um, I'd far rather that than anything else. Um, I'm just gonna double check what we've got down the, uh, I've worked in the cat up, whoops. Um, I'm just gonna double check about these things. Oh, I thought it was actually it. There was just one more thing. Bar 24, fitting in all the syllables. Let's just look at that before we close. 24, oh yes. Now that, I'm afraid, there's no solution other than practice. Irreprehensibilis est. And you can't miss two important things. Normally, conductors will ask for a slight flick on re, i, re, pre, they might not, and the T on the last crotchet. Si, bili, sest. Yep, wouldn't believe how many times that I've, I've heard that. Um, <laughs> really, uh, really, really scabby. People love paying attention to starting at the same time, but they don't pay as much attention to finishing at the same time. So let's just say it through. This is our last thing for today. We're gonna to try and practice everything we've talked about. Um, we're gonna sing the alto line because it's got semitones in it. We're gonna practice matching our vowels and we're gonna do a released breath 
and we're going to put the, the T in the right place at the end. Okay, good luck. See you at the end of this phrase. There's the D, you can sing soprano if you like. No, you can't. Everyone's going to sing the alto line because it's got semitones in it. Here we go. Release the breath and. And obviously it even crotchets on C B L E S. Beautiful. Okay. These are things to think about. We're at the start of a journey here. We're starting to grow our practice. If you don't do any practice other than coming to Sing Plus sessions, then you're going to be getting regular input and helping your voice to progress um, and to increase your sort of awareness of the music and your awareness of how you approach a piece when you see it for the first time. Thank you so much to those people who have submitted um, uh, requests in the chat. It's great to have the requests because often you'll find somebody else in the room has the same idea but is not confident enough to ask or maybe isn't quite sure how to put it into words. So these requests are really, really useful. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed discovering this piece if you haven't come across it before um, and that you will join us again soon. And that's it, everybody. Have a wonderful evening, um, and I'll see you again in the next one. Don't forget there's an album project tutti on Sunday. Um, you should just have received an email about it. Um, so that's for Lacrimosa people as well. We're just opening that up to everybody who's doing a song on the album. Fantastic. Bye, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.